Hi, my name is Michael Schillman, and I lead a project called Storybook. Storybook has a unique approach to documenting your React components using something called Stories. And today I'm really excited to explain to you what that means and show you some demos. Let's check it out. If I was designing a documentation system from scratch, it would probably look something like this diagram. On the left, we have the input. Um, maybe it's Markdown, maybe it's MDX, maybe a WYSIWYG editor. And on the right, you have a documentation site. Um, there's a lot of examples of systems like this, um, general systems like Next and Gatsby, um, kind of component development systems like Doxy, StyleGuidest, Docusaurus. Storybook is different from these tools in that it's not a first principle design. Um, instead, it's a, an evolutionary, uh, pragmatic design on top of a tool that was already popular and already really widely used. Um, and I think it's interesting to go through that evolution because where we ended up is something that's pretty unique, um, powerful, and as we'll see, potentially complementary to a lot of other documentation systems out there. So the best way to understand Storybook is simply to use Storybook. So I'm going to take you on a quick tour of a Storybook. This is the BBC's Samid component library, um, a collection of UI components used across the BBC's web properties, um, all built and tested in Storybook. Um, here is uh, an example of a header. Um, this header is, uh, has different states. Uh, maybe there is a link uh, on the right-hand side. Maybe it's a right-to-left version. Um, and then you can play with it in various ways. Um, you can look at it in a blurred vision simulator um, or maybe grayscale. Um, you can look at it on a mobile phone layout. Um, you can play with the content of it. Um, maybe you want to see what this looks like in a Burmese script, um, and, um, and, and so on. You can do accessibility checks on it. This is an accessible component with six passing tests. Um, and then you can do this for every component, for every interesting state of the component. Most of the components in this particular library are atomic components. Um, here's kind of a media player component. Um, what does it look like when there's offensive content? What does it look like for audio media? and so on. Um, and Storybook is great for capturing all of these states, for automatically testing these states, and for documenting these states. And it works for everything from these atomic components all the way up to entire pages. So that was a pretty low key introduction to Storybook, but I don't want to undersell how powerful a tool it is. Um, a lot of front end teams depend on it today. Here's a quote from Adam Neary at Airbnb. The tool we use for editing UI is Storybook. It's the perfect place to make sure your work aligns with designs to the pixel across breakpoints. They were one of the first um, companies to kind of adopt Storybook wholesale. Um, the Twitter web design overhaul was all done in Storybook. Uh, the Slack UI was built in Storybook. Um, pretty much a lot of modern software you use today was built in Storybook. And what this means is that thousands of teams across the industry are writing millions of stories. So given that context, this slide might make a little more sense. Really the question we're asking is not how do we design the perfect first principles documentation system, but instead, how do we help teams get the most documentation value out of their stories with the least amount of work? The first thing we built and released just about exactly two years ago was something called Storybook Docs page. The idea here was to automatically turn all your existing stories into documentation. Let me show you what that looks like. This is how to write a story in Storybook. On the left-hand side, we have a file button.stories.tsx. It exports a default um, metadata about the component, and then it defines a set of named exports. Each named export is a story, and we can see all of those stories on the right-hand side in Storybook. Um, if we look at the first story here, basic. Basic is a function that takes some args, which are basically props in React, and spreads those into the component. And then it sets the default args for the story. So if we go in here and we edit this, uh, we can see it updating in near real time. And it's also worth noting that these stories can be written in more typical JSX if you prefer. Now let's take a look at Storybook Docs. Storybook installs a docs tab out of the box. So we've got our basic story here. When we click over the docs tab, we see that story. Um, we see some markdown documentation, which is grabbed from a JS doc comment on the component itself. There's other ways to set it. Um, we see the story in a frame here. We can look at the source code. We can play around with the story. 
and we can see both the story and the code updating in real time. Um, so it's got some nice features there. And then in addition to that, we also have all the stories um, that we've already written in one place on the page. And this all comes for free uh, with no extra work required. But what if you want more control of your documentation? This is where we get back to the first principles design and we built Storybook MDX, which is an MDX flavor that is fully compatible with Storybook so that you can author your stories in Markdown and get all the rest of the benefits of the Storybook ecosystem, like testing, like design handoff, and so on. So for MDX, let's take a look at Reaviz. Reaviz is a data visualization component library by Austin McDaniel and one of the early adopters of Storybook Docs. So on the left, we have our input, which is MDX. MDX is a flavor of Markdown that allows arbitrary JSX. So up top, we have a meta block here, which situates this in the Storybook documentation tree. We have uh, some badges here, and then we have typical Markdown. If we go down and look at some of these other docs, we see um, kind of typical introductory documentation with examples uh, sprinkled throughout. Um, we have uh, examples for each of the chart types. Um, these are rich custom docs with source code, with API, um, and all of these things are really easy to put together in Storybook. So let's take a look at the source code for one of these. We have a hive plot here. On the left-hand side, we have the MDX. Uh, again, up top, we have a meta block, which situates this in the hierarchy. Um, we have some markdown. We have here a story block. Uh, story block allows you to refer to externally defined stories. You can also define stories in line in Storybook MDX. Um, and then underneath that, you have a bunch of markdown, code snippets, and so forth, what you would expect. So next, I'd like to introduce the concept of doc blocks. Doc blocks are reusable documentation components, and you've already seen some of these in the demo. So this is args table, one of our most powerful doc blocks. It is auto-generated API documentation for your component, auto-generated controls for manipulating your stories. It's got a compact view if you just want to see controls. Um, it's got the ability to group all this stuff into sections and subsections for components with big surface areas. Um, it has got a whole variety of controls ranging from kind of an object editor um, to Boolean toggle to color swatches and so on and so forth. We've got a bunch of other doc blocks that are bundled in Storybook. We've got a color palette. We've got a description block um, that you've seen as well. We've got uh, an icon gallery. Um, we've got this uh, preview block, which is sort of a composite block. You've seen that as well. Um, we've got uh, the source block with different syntax highlighters, um, the story block that you've seen, and the basic idea is everything that we present to you in Storybook Docs, we want you to be able to compose these things flexibly and easily. But one of the great things about Storybook is that it's extensible. And here's a fantastic example of that. This is MDX Embed, which introduces a whole bunch of useful doc blocks for Storybook. It's got a CodePen doc block. It's got a Figma doc block for embedding designs in your documentation. Um, it's got a YouTube doc block for um, embedding videos. So in summary, Storybook doc blocks are a really cool way to supercharge your documentation. So the last thing I want to show you today is Storybook Embed. This is in early development right now, but it is our vision for the future of Storybook docs and even for Storybook as a whole. So the first generation of Storybook Embed has already existed for a couple years. It was integrated into Envision Design System Manager, Zero Height, and Frontify, all of which are sort of cross-disciplinary, hosted WYSIWYG documentation editors. So suppose I want a nice WYSIWYG interface for my designers and product people to edit my design system. Here's an example from Zero Height. Uh, this is a WYSIWYG editor. I can add images, add design assets, um, all sorts of other stuff. Um, one of the things I can add is Storybook Docs. So if I click here and paste this URL from the Reaviz example we saw earlier, um, I can embed my story in line. Uh, and this is great because now I have my live production component in my documentation. 
So this next part is very early stage, but it turns out that when you expand the Embed API, you can do some really cool things. I'll show you a great integration from UXPIN design tool, and we've got some other big plans for next year along the same lines. So this is the UXPIN integration. UXPIN is a design tool, much like Sketch or Figma, that allows you to draw with vector graphics and create interactive prototypes. And with Storybook, it also allows you to embed your production components inside those same designs. So this is their example of taking the Audi design system and importing it into UXPIN with a couple clicks. Once the design system is embedded, you can drag out components and these components are your stories. Um, and then you can interact with them just like any other vector drawing. These are responsive and interactive. Um, so it's a really powerful way of reusing your assets and keeping your designs up to date with what's going out in production. There you have it, a quick tour of Storybook Docs, what we were aiming to do, what we built, where we're taking it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like to learn more, please check out the Storybook website, storybook.js.org. If you'd like to follow me, my Twitter is mshillman. Storybook's Twitter is storybookjs. And now I will open it up for questions. Thank you. Hi, Michael. That was a, that was a great talk. I've been using Storybook for years. I use it now at uh, at the newest company that I'm in. And to be honest, it's one of those things that just it keeps getting better, keeps getting more useful with time, which is a very good thing. Exactly. It's just music it's to my ears. Nice. Yeah, like I think I've never used the markdown part to be honest until I joined this company, and it's super nice. It's just super cool. super nice. Yeah. Thank you. It's a work in progress, so um, we're still pushing on it quite a bit. Yeah, I feel like everything right now is, there you go. <laughs> I feel like everything right now is kind of a work in progress. I feel like it's, it's one of those tools that keeps getting improved. It keeps getting work, out, work done. Nothing is ever really finalized. I think that's the problem and beauty of it's open like source. <laughs> a bottomless <laughs> well of <laughs> work. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, incremental like, improvements, yeah. You're never gonna be bored. There's way too many issues for you to <laughs> ever be bored. <laughs> Do you have anything that you would love to see in Storybook? That even if it's maybe not coming today, now maybe not coming even this year, it's something that you would really, really like to see in Storybook. Um, I mean, for me, like I kind of handed at it in the talk. Um, when we started Storybook Docs, um, we didn't really know what we were getting into. Uh, we were grafting <laughs> basically a second product on top of the first product, um, and, and it shows if you use it. Um, so where we want to take it is um, in this kind of embedding direction. And if you look at uh, some of these tools, um, whether they are uh, tools like Next.js and Gatsby, whether they are kind of development oriented like Docusaurus, like these are great tools that have put a ton of effort into um, building out documentation, um, whether it's customizing the styling and kind of the interaction interactivity or whether it's internationalization, like there's so many different things you can't uh, do everything. And in Storybook, we've always kind of focused on the stories. We focused on the examples and kind of doing more and more around the stories, making them more and more useful in different ways. Um, and so Storybook Docs is one aspect of that. Um, the place where I'm really excited to take it is to actually make those more and more embeddable, um, both the stories and the rest of the doc blocks uh, outside of Storybook in tools that were built for the job of documentation. Um, and so where I see the project heading is like right now when you write markdown, for example, in VS Code, you can go see the markdown in another window and it's right there and it's super useful, but that's not what you're publishing to the world. Um, and so to me, like where I want Storybook Docs is to be something similar to that, but for your components with your auto-generated API docs and so on. And then when you want to build a really nice production design system uh, or what have you, then you can pick the best tool for the job and reuse your stories in that tool. So um, we, we just kind of, we have like 
a zillion users of Storybook. We have a zillion users of Storybook Docs. Everybody wants to do something different. And like, we don't want to boil the ocean. And so I'm hoping to kind of build a bridge between Storybook and these other tools uh, so that we can focus on what we do best. And, um, and that's probably like my number one desire for next year. Um, okay, so anyone who's on watching us on YouTube, please feel free to send in your questions and they will, I will say them out loud. Uh, but for now, I also wanted to talk to you about the fact that like, that's also a problem with being so extensible, right? You have so many like community made plugins. Yeah. Yeah. That's we, like, how do you, yeah. how do you handle that as sort of like, do you have, do you get a lot of issues? Do you have to run into a lot of problems with these types of situations? We have been very consistently ambitious. Um, to try to just yeah. <laughs> do as much as we can. Um, and I think that like that has caused us to do all sorts of crazy projects that we never intended to do and um, and get in our head in all sorts of different ways. Um, but that's pretty much been the guiding philosophy is just really try to go big, go everywhere, do as much as we can. And, um, and we haven't Died yet? So that's kind of, that's kind of the um, yeah. We, we we have a we have a, we have a ton. We have about five hundred add-ons for Storybook. We have um, you know a ton of different um, way. You know, even lots of commercial services built on top of Storybook that we have to worry about breaking when we change it. We're in the middle of a massive rewrite of the core right now for performance reasons, um, and it's incredibly scary because we have this giant surface area. Um, so I think it's the project matures, we'll probably try to tighten all that down a bit. Um, but in the meantime, we're just living with it and uh, and dealing with stuff as it comes. When it comes to the refactoring, I just want to ask if you are, are you, are you using uh, a typed language to do, to like to write Storybook? Yeah, Storybook is, um, Storybook was originally written in JavaScript. It was rewritten in TypeScript a couple years ago. And, um, the refactor is also written in TypeScript, and okay. that should make it's it useful, slightly easier. It's, yeah, that should make it's it useful, easier. but it's not it's not a panacea. Um, oh yeah, like that should make it easier, but take <laughs> longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. You can't have everything, right? Okay, totally. so I, <laughs> I think for now that's in terms of questions. Is there anything else you want to say about the upcoming work, or just in general? By yourself? No. Okay. Just, uh, no? just right. check it out. Uh, everybody give it a shot if you haven't uh, used it recently. Uh, as Sarah said, it's constantly getting better. It is we'll definitely to... getting much better. I um, I can assure you that it does have dark mode, and it's pretty good. It has a dark mode now. Okay, so thank you so much, Michael. Thank you so much for your work on Storybook as well.